All right, everybody, it's noon. We're going to go ahead and get started with the VSPRO GUI and tutorial basic demonstration. Uh, this is going to be presented by Justin Gravit from ES Aero. And uh, ES Aero are some of the ones doing the SBIR work for improving OpenVSP. So uh, you should all find this very, very interesting. And with that, uh, go ahead and uh, take it away, Justin. Great. Thanks, Brandon. Uh, so like Brandon said, my name is Justin Gravit. I'm an aerospace engineer with ES Aero. Um, I've been software developer uh, for the most part of four years, uh, contributing to OpenVSP. Today I'm going to be starting off talking about the VSP Aero GUI in OpenVSP and, and just covering the basics. Um, we'll then go back to Dave Kinney to talk about some of the more advanced features of VSP Aero, and then we'll follow that up with uh, those advanced features in the OpenVSP GUI as well. So if you have questions about things like control surface deflections, uh, unsteady rotating propellers, try to save those for the advanced presentation um, in a few hours. But appreciate all of you tuning in online. Um, please just a reminder to set your uh, YouTube quality to 1080p, or excuse me, uh, yes, 1080p. and also, feel free to leave any comments in the YouTube chat, any questions that you have, and on the um, the, the conference I.O. site as well. Um, but I'll go ahead and jump into this. We're going to be going through just an introduction about the role of OpenVSP with VSP Aero. We'll go through a, a basic walkthrough of the GUI, everything that you'll need to do a basic aerodynamic analysis. We'll explain the results manager where we show what VSP Aero is outputting after you run your analysis. I'll walk through the, the VSP Aero viewer. Um, we'll talk about exporting results, uh, basic workflow. Um, I'll touch on how tessellation is used with VSP Aero, um, provide some modeling tips, and then at the end, I'll, I'll go through with a, a demo describing and showing some of the features that um, will be shown in this presentation. So just as some background, OpenVSP and VSP Aero are two completely separate programs. Uh, VSP Aero is developed by Dave Kinney. Uh, it's a separate executable. If you download OpenVSP from the website and you look at the folder that comes with it, you'll see a VSP executable, a VSP Aero executable, and you'll also see a few other ones. Those are the, the VSP slicer, uh, the VSP viewer. And so all of these programs interact through uh, input files, uh, you know, output files, and command line arguments. So the role of OpenVSP, first of all, is just to be a geometry engine. So OpenVSP allows you to model the geometry that will eventually be used to feed VSP Aero and other tools as well. And it also generates the file representation of that geometry that VSP Aero is expecting. Those two files are the, the DGEN GM file and the, the CART3D uh, or TRI file. So DGEN GM file is used if you're running a VLM analysis and CART3D is used for panel. Uh, then once VSP Aero executes, OpenVSP reads in all those result files that VSP Aero um, outputs and provides a quick plotting capability of them. It also provides export of those. And the last thing that OpenVSP does is allows uh, an API to do all the same things that you can do with the VSP Aero in the GUI, but instead through a scripting or a, a code-based interface. So that allows you to do things like automation, where you can run um, you know, sweeps of VSP Aero um, and doing trade studies and things of that nature. Some of those details about the API, um, there'll be a presentation on tomorrow. On the right, you can see just the, the first tab of the VSP Aero GUI, the overview. Um, and you can see a, a preview of the, the DGEN GEOM view if you're running VLM analysis. I'll talk about that more in a second. So on the overview tab of the VSP Aero GUI, the, the very top, you can specify if you're going to be performing a VLM or a panel analysis. Uh, Dave, can you just mentioned you know the, the kind of cases of when you want to use VLM versus panel. For the most part, uh, VLM is the best kind of starting point. Um, 
especially if you're just modeling lifting surfaces. Uh, panel method, if you have more body components, it, it might be a better choice, but it is going to be more computationally expensive to run. So VLM is always a good starting point. Right below that, uh, th those toggles for which analysis you're going to be running, you can select the set for VSPRO. So that allows you to you know, exclude certain components that you might not need in the analysis. Um, a lot of times, if it's, if it's not contributing to your results significantly, you might want to leave those sort of things out. Um, examples would be like, like uh, maybe landing gear, things like that. At least initially, you might just want to stick with your main lifting surfaces, like the wing, the tail, things like that. Below that, there's an option to preview the VLM geometry. So that provides a view of the DGEN geometry that you're going to be inputting to VSPRO. Um, and of that set that you specify. So that allows you to check if there are any kind of weird things going on in the uh, VLM geometry before running VSPRO. So that's definitely something that I'd recommend giving a try um, before you execute VSPRO. Next in the, in the middle of that case, or in the middle where it says reference area and lengths, we have uh, the ability to specify your um, reference areas and dimensions. So those are all going to be in whatever units uh, you are using to model your geometry. Uh, for the most part, VSPRO and OpenVSP is uh, is unitless. So you just be consistent with your units and everything will come out as you expect. You can specify the, the reference wing if you'd like, and that's what that from model toggle is. And then the drop down will allow you to choose any of your your wing geoms that are available or you can just manually input your, your SREF, uh, BREF, things like that. Below that, you have the moment reference position. So this will use the mass properties tool to calculate the, the CG input, or you can just specify it manually. So um, here we also have a set that you can use to calculate the CG from, and this uses the uh, uh, slicing to, um, to, to identify that, that CG value. Next thing on here is we have our, our flow condition. So alpha and beta are going to be in degrees. This allows you to uh, input a number of points, a, a starting and ending, and then a number of points. So that's a linearly spaced array. Um, so this allows you to do sweeps of different flow conditions. Um, one thing to note is to avoid transonic mock numbers. You can input subsonic, supersonic, but results from transonic values uh, will be incorrect. Um, it may even cause VSPRO to crash. So try to avoid that. Below it, you have the controls group angles. So this is where you set the deflections of your control surface groups. This will be touched on more in the uh, advanced presentation later. When you're after you set everything up with your flow conditions, your uh, reference areas, moments, uh, CG, I mean, uh, then you can launch the uh, solver. So at the bottom there, this is shown at all times, we have a launch solver button. Um, once you click that, the outputs uh, of VSPR, the status messages, will be printed to the, the console above it. One thing to note is the first thing that is printed on that is the command line arguments that are being fed to VSPR. So if you'd like, you can use this to actually run VSPRO directly yourself through the command line. As long as you have those DGEN geom um, and VSPRO input files available, you can open up a command terminal, copy that exact same uh, input argument, and it will run VSPRO the same way that OpenVSP is. While the solver is running, there's also a kill button um, in case it's taking too long, anything like that, or you realize you set something up incorrectly, you can kill the solver uh, to terminate it prematurely. Once VSPRO finishes executing, the results manager will pop up, and that's basically our, our quick view of the results from VSPRO. Um, I'll explain that more in a minute. You also can launch the VSPRO viewer, which is a separate executable like VSPRO. And that allows you to see things like the pressure distribution over your, your geometry. Um, and I'll pull that up in a minute as well. The bottom left is a, a new feature that was recently added. So 
this is the a load previous results button. So what you can do with this is if you've closed open VSP and open it back up again, and after you have generated results from VSP arrow um, before you originally closed it, you could click this button and it will um, use your VSP model name. So whatever you have on the advanced tab under um, the, the DGEN GEOM or, or CART 3D input file, it will use that as the base name to read in all the VSP error results again and, and populate uh, OpenVSP's memory. So then you could export those, you could show them in the results manager, uh, anything like that. So here we have the results manager. So this is the, the first tab that shows up when you run um, a VLM analysis. So this is the, the load distribution tab. It reads the start out load file from VSPRO. So the top left, you can select which data you want to plot. Um, I believe you can plot multiple at the same time as well. There are some advanced options that we'll talk about more when we go into the advanced GUI tutorial later. Um, then you could specify below that which flow condition you'd like to see. And then there's a legend and you have access control options. And so this is going to show you the, the spanwise distribution of your results. The first tab of the results manager is showing you convergence. So uh, this is going to show you how results are changing over each wake iteration. So it is also an option to plot the residual of those changes. Um, if there aren't any changes, it, it won't show anything. Um, so that's just one thing to note. But this is showing you how each iteration is converging. Oops. And then the, the third tab of the results manager is the sweep tab. So this is going to highlight all the changes across flow conditions. So this is where you're going to see something like your drag folder. Um, you can plot multiple Y values with a single X data value or vice versa, but you can't plot multiple X and multiple Y. Here you can see the VSP viewer. So this is that separate executable. This one's also uh, developed by Dave Kinney. Um, and this is going to show you things like your, your CP distribution, uh, vorticity, things like that. So here's just uh, showing all the different features that you have uh, from the drop down menus on the, the top uh, the upper bar of the VSP viewer. Uh, the right side of the viewer, you can control which solution you're looking at. So if you're running multiple flow conditions or if you're running an unsteady analysis, you can step through time. Um, the bottom right side shows you the DGEN geom components and which ones you want to hide or, sh uh, or not show. Or, I mean, show, I mean. Now, back to the VSP area, or excuse me, the Open VSP VSP area GUI. You also have an export option on the the bottom right. So, after all the results from VSP area have been read in, so your your history file, your load file, uh, things like that, Open VSP can export them all together in a single CSV. So that saves you the effort of having to read in those files manually and, and collect all the data. So this is just a single place. Uh, then you can read that into any sort of program you'd, if you'd like to plot the results or do anything else with those. So this slide is going to show just a basic workflow of how you'd use VSPRO through OpenVSP. So it's accessed through the analysis dropdown. There's a VSPRO uh, item there. Start by setting up your, your reference area and links, um, looking at your VLM geometry, making sure there aren't any issues. Um, I'll show an image of what some of those issues to look out for might look like. Set your moment reference position, your flow conditions, and then you'll click the, the launch solver button. Once VSPRO has finished executing, you can look at the results in the results manager, which is actually launched automatically once VSPRO finishes. You could also look at the, the viewer, or you can export the results to a CSV file. So tessellation, 
Tessellation plays a big role in your VSP error results. So for a wing, you can set the clustering of how the, um, the tessellation is clustered towards the, the leading or trailing edge um, in the cordwise direction or in the between the root and the tip in the spanwise direction. So the spanwise direction is going to be U tessellation and cordwise direction is going to be W tessellation. So that's accessed on the, the plan tab of your uh, geometry, while the spanwise tessellation is per section on the section tab of your wing geometry. The spanwise tessellation sets the number and location of the wakes in VSP arrow. So if you increase your number of U tessellation, you'll increase the number of wakes. That also will cause the uh, solution to take a little bit longer to run, but it also tends to be um, indicative of higher fidelity as well. That's not always the case, um, so use caution, but for the most part, increasing your spanwise and cordwise resolution will improve fidelity. Um, for body components, the skinning controls how the tessellation clustering is performed. Um, and then just as a note, Adjusting tessellation slightly or moving your geometry can help fix mesh and solution issues if you do encounter those. So here we have some just general modeling tips for VSPRO. So um, this is kind of a, a common thread with a lot of tools in OpenVSP. Try to start simple and work your way up to higher complexity. So uh, you don't need to run, you know, large number of wake iterations. You don't have to crank up the tessellation as much as you can. Start with something that will give you a quick answer so you can assess the results and then you can, you know, do things to try to um, increase the fidelity of that analysis. Try not to include anything in your VSPRO analysis that is not necessary, at least for in the beginning. So maybe just start with your, your wing and tail, as I mentioned earlier, and then you could add in additional components later. Um, and then usually you'll want to start with VLM um, instead of the, the panel method. Use the VSP, uh, the OpenVSP VLM geometry preview. That will allow you to see if there's anything weird going on with your DGen geom um, on the right there. This is an example of something that could be problematic. You'll see um, there's a lot of, uh, um, it, it's not, the, the, the cruciform shape is not very straight for the most part. The tessellation is uh, not scaled very uniformly. Um, it just does not look very clean. So look out for things like that. Try to address them because they can be problematic in VSPRO. One common issue is with body components, a lot of times the um, body component isn't actually closed. So to solve that, try to always model the first and last fuselage or stack cross section as a point. That'll make sure that that component is completely closed. As I mentioned before, the U tessellation is going to set your number of wakes and where they're attached. Um, so adding more is going to increase the execution time usually improves fidelity, but just use caution. That's not always the case. Body components in VLM analysis, they don't contribute to lift or induce drag, so um, be careful when you're including them. Uh, sometimes errors are introduced by including those components, so might be better off leaving them out, at least initially, than adding them in. See how that changes your results. And then just a couple of other modeling tips. Uh, rounded rectangles, this is uh, something that comes up often. Uh, they're incompatible with VSPRO. I forget exactly why, um, but if you can, you know, especially for a VLM analysis, if you could use something else that will get you the same uh, flat plate representation, use a different airfoil. Avoid really different spanwise versus cordwise tessellation. Um, if you're cranking up your, your spanwise tessellation, you might want to increase your cordwise as well. Uh, I mentioned this earlier, you can 
adjust geometry or tessellation slightly to to fix some issues sometimes. Um, and then check out the wiki pages that talk about VSP area. There's a, a modeling guide, a VSP area tutorial, and um, some common problems that are listed on there as well. And then the last one, the, the Google group is always really beneficial. Uh, a lot of questions that have been asked before, so you can search through there and see if yours has come up before, um, or you can just go ahead and ask a new one. So that's uh, all I had for the slides for the basic uh, overview of VSP era with OpenVSP. Um, but I could pull up the OpenVSP GUI now and show you some of these things that I, I just talked through. Um, but I guess before I do that, are there any questions that have come up? Uh, Justin, uh, Rob and I have been answering some of the questions in the chat, and I think um, most of those have already been answered. So I think for the sake of time, um, let's go ahead and proceed with a demo, unless, uh, Rob, you think anything needs to be asked live here? No, I'd say go to the demo. All right. Wonderful. Okay. Uh, well, Sounds great. Go on ahead, and uh, we'll let you have it. All right, great, thanks. All right, so hopefully can, everyone can see OpenVSP up here. This is just the, the latest version, 64-bit Windows, downloaded from the website. So I'll start by just creating a really simple, um, you know, wing and pod type of airplane. Not me to do that. So, just trying to get a somewhat representative airplane uh, for this demonstration. But tail. And we'll make a vertical tail as well. There we go. So, let's see. So, simple airplane. Um, not exactly uh, very representative of anything in particular, but um, serves the purpose that it needs to. So, once you have your, your geometry all set up and ready to go, the first thing I'm actually going to do is go into the set editor and I want to create a set for VSP or VLM analysis. And so the set editor has actually been updated recently. Um, you can click this add all geoms button. And then what I'm going to do is just remove the, the pod geometry from there because it's a body component. It's not going to contribute to um, lift and drag for the VLM analysis. So I'm going to leave it out. Now when you go into the VSPRO GUI, you can select here under geometry set, just the one for uh, VSPRO. Oops. And now if I click preview VLM geometry, that'll show you that, that flat plate representation and one thing to note, uh, sometimes, I'm, shouldn't cause an issue, but uh, sometimes when you have these types of intersections um, that are, uh, you know, very, it's not the entire component passing through the other, could potentially lead to issues. Just something to look out for, maybe just increase the uh, distance off of there just slightly. So now back to the VSPR GUI, we can click on from model to grab the reference area and lengths from uh, any of our lifting surfaces. So I'll go to the wing geom for that. And then we can also calculate the CG 
using uh, an input number of slices. And so that's going to use the mass properties tool, which is based on the inputs that you provide for uh, density under this mass properties uh, input here. Next, I'll set the flow conditions. So for this demonstration, we could just do a, a simple alpha sweep. And on the advanced tab, I mentioned this briefly, but we can also set the number of wake iterations. Uh, just to make this run a little more quickly, I'll bring it down to three. Um, usually the default is uh, perfectly okay. You sort of get diminished returns after you know five wake iterations. So um, cranking it up to a really high number is just going to slow things down and not impact your results uh, very significantly. Um, but that's something that you can play around with. Look at the convergence plots um, and see what it's really doing. But so now that I have that all set up, I'm just going to click the launch solver button. This will go through very quickly, running through each flow condition. And then here you have the, the load distribution that, that pops up. Um, we can look at the, the sweep tab, and that's going to give us, you know, Drag pull or basically a CD total versus CL. Um, you could select individual flow conditions. You can group them using the, the shift and control buttons on your keyboard. Um, like we said earlier, you can plot multiple Y or multiple X. You just can't plot uh, multiple of each. If I go to the convergence tab, um, so since I didn't run, you know, five wake iterations, this isn't going to show a whole lot. But if I was, which I, I can do uh, right after this, um, I can run for a large number of wake iterations, and you'll see how the uh, solutions are converging uh, each for each data point. But going back to the load distribution, uh, here you can plot multiple things at the same time as well, and you can plot individual flow conditions or multiple. Um, this doesn't unfortunately differentiate between uh, the results for each surface. Um, but you can tell based on just the span locations at the bottom that you know this is going to be the top one is going to be the main wing. Then you have your horizontal stabilizer and just the, the Y of zero is going to be the vertical stabilizer. Um, that information you can pull out of the uh, VSPRO files yourself to identify which one's which. Um, but in the results manager here, it's just going to provide you, you know, a quick view um, to, to see what your results are looking like. So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a single flow condition, maybe at alpha of five degrees. And I'm going to increase the number of wake iterations a bit. And then what I'm also going to do is show how tessellation influence, influences the results. So um, to get off of the preview VLM geometry mode, you can just come in and highlight or select your set and then change this drop down from Cambridge Gen to normal. Then from there, you can go back to, you know, wire view, hidden, anything like that. But that's how you go back and forth between the uh, the, the VLM preview and uh, what you normally see in OpenVSP by default. So let me run this real quick. Click Launch Solver. So now this ran for five wake iterations. So now you can see how the results are converging. This is the residual plot. Um, so you could look at just the actual values of each result, each wake iteration, or you can plot the residual here. There isn't any change, so there's nothing shown. Here you can see after five wake, wake iterations, the results aren't changing at all. That's why nothing's showing up on the residual plot. So that's what this convergence tab, convergence tab is, is used to show. Um, if you're running unsteady analysis, the instead of wake iterations on the x-axis, you'll be seeing time.
Next thing I'm going to show, which I actually forgot to do on the last example, was to increase the uh, U-tessellation on the wing. So you'll see these interpolated airfoils are increasing as I increase this value here. And now, if I launch VSPRO again, I probably should decrease this again, but that's OK. Now, if I look at the load distribution, there are more points for the main wing um, shown here. And those correspond to each of those interpolated airfoils on the wing. So next, I'll pull up the viewer. So this is the separate VSP viewer executable. So this is going to show you your uh, DGEN geom geometry. I can come over to arrow and I can plot the pressure. So this is going to show you your, your delta CP. If I run the contours legend, you could plot the C or show the CG there. Um, you could show other information about your inputs, such as your, your flow condition at the bottom here, uh, the vehicle CG, things like that. I could look at the trailing wakes. And if you notice here, the trailing wakes are going to be attached at each of those uh, interpolated airfoils, like was shown on this main wing here when I increased the U tessellation. The top right here, like I mentioned earlier, if you have more than one uh, flow condition run, then you can step through those. Other options, you can you know, change what these contour uh, levels are for the shading. Um, this is really useful if you have, you know, when you're doing things like uh, unsteady analysis where um, the results on the propeller might be very different from the wing, things like that. Um, then there's some other advanced features on there as well. Um, those will come into play more um, when we're running some of the advanced input um, capabilities that we'll be talking about later. So now, if I wanted to run a panel uh, analysis, I would just come over here and click the panel method button instead. And so here now we're going to generate a mesh of those lifting surfaces. And that will be the input geometry to VSPRO this time. So I'll click Launch Solver. And you'll see that generated the, the mesh. It's taking a little bit longer. Um, here you don't have load distribution plots anymore. You're just going to have, uh, for this case, the, the sweep, which I only ran a single flow condition, so there's nothing really to sweep in this case, um, and your convergence still for uh, the change across wake iterations. If I pull up the viewer again, you'll see now that we have a thick surface representation of the lifting surfaces. Um, but all the other capabilities in terms of plotting the trailing wakes, things like that, uh, those are unchanged. So I think that pretty much covers most of you know the, the basic capabilities of um, open VSP with VSP Aero. Uh, there's a lot more that you can do. Um, we'll talk about that, you know, a, a little bit later in terms of what's on the advanced tab, the, you know, control grouping, actuator discs, and propellers. Um, but those are kind of just, you know, the, the basic things that you can do. So uh, is there any questions I, I could uh, go over or anything else that um, people online would like me to show? Let's see. Most of the questions so far online are either, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, specific modeling problems or uh, asking about some of the stuff that applies to, say, the theory and things. We, uh, If anyone mm -hmm. online has a request for a demonstration on uh, say, running VSPRO on a particular kind of configuration or um, some modeling techniques that you'd like to see, by all means, post those into the live chat or the social Q&A. 
Uh, we probably have a good 15 minutes before we need to take a 10 minute break to switch off to the next presentation. Um, let's see. Great, and I guess just one more thing to mention. Um, with that uh, DGEN Geom representation, um, I know, I think Rob and Dave have probably mentioned this before. It's actually showing you the, the Cambered DGEN, so it's going to capture the, the mean camber line. Um, here we're having, you know, we just have a symmetric airfoil with no camber. If we increase that, oops, you'll see um, that that will be what the geometry represents represented in VSP area will be. So uh, it will capture those characteristics. Um, but if you have a symmetric airfoil, it'll just be, um, you know, a straight representation between the leading and trailing edge. All right. Well, I guess that's pretty much all I had. Um, the advanced presentation will cover a, a lot more, um, but otherwise, feel free to post some questions, and we'll try to answer them. And uh, otherwise, I appreciate everyone listening in. Thanks a lot, Justin. Good demo. Great. Thanks.